Okay, um... I'm only gonna put Susato in that DLC outfit for this case because I don't particularly... It's okay, but I'm like not a huge fan of it. But she has some interesting animations when she's in this uh, DLC outfit, so I'll just leave it on. I don't even know when I'm gonna put Sherlock on the other outfit because he just... It doesn't fit anywhere in any of these cases because they're all in, like, Britain. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just gonna keep her in this outfit. I'm gonna keep Naruhoto in this outfit forever, because <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Alright, God, the audio's good. Let's see. Okay. I don't have a translation of the Sherlock Holmes monologue that's gonna come up, I'm sure. Nope, that's not it. Uh, more, than, uh, more than anything, I will probably add the dialogue, the monologue, when I actually work on the LP version of this game, so... I mean, technically, if you can squint really hard, you'll notice that the dialogue in the cutscene is in English. But it's like in scribble, so it's really hard to see what it's saying. So I can't, unfortunately, type out or give you the translation of what's being said there, so... I'm gonna do my best to get to the to be continue on this one. second to finish setting up. Got my guides up just in case I missed something on the translation that I was given, so. Yes, we can continue. We've finished the last case. You won't be overwriting anything. Briar Road no hodo de okotta. Sungatanaki hanin yoru. 冬の夜の惨劇背中を刺され倒れた浦和垣レディが生死をさまよううちに事件は解決した窮地に陥った東洋人の留学生が我が友人によって救い出されたその晩ガス灯の刻む炎暗い影の中再び機械な事件が闇
a hodokun. Perfect timing. I just finished frying the bacon and was about to call you down. Yeah, good morning, Iris Chan. It smells great again today. So, listen to this. Something surprising happened this morning. Shh! Silence! How about some light mental. Calistic. Calistanic? Calistanic! Oh my god, what? <laughs> okay, hold on. How about some light mental calisthenics before breakfast, folks? Is that a drug? <laughs> Homsan. The hull, I see. Oh my, so that's how it is. Oh, too close, too close. I believe I see it now. The truth that my deductions have whispered to me. D what do you mean? You. Voila. Experienced something surprising this morning. How was that, Mr. Naruhodo? The... Oh, come now. It was simple. I shouldn't even need to explain. For starters, your hair is an absolute mess this morning, sticking out at all angles. Secondly, you seem to have forgotten to fasten the third button on your jacket. From those two things, I can conclude that something happened to startle you this morning. Um, can I say something? Oh, by all means! What is it, Mr. Naruhodo? My hair is just like it always is. It's been like this ever since I met you. Huh. Has it? And this button was popped off last night. By you. Oh? Uh -huh. Homesy did that? Ah! Now I remember! It happened at the dinner, didn't it? I took up my famous instrument like always, and was enjoying playing a solo into its warbling voice. That's right. The sinking famous instrument suddenly snapped in third string. I was so fierce that without even thinking about it, I just reached out and plucked off the button in front of me. Can I please have my button back? I can't close my jacket anymore. Did he take the button to try to fix the violin? <laughs> What? You expect me to know where it is? Isn't it lying over there somewhere? Harsh. What matters is whether my deduction was correct or not, and nothing else. But I'm pretty sure not the Hurukun told us that already. Something surprising happened this morning, he said. Sherlock. <laughs> now there's the great surprise. Ugh. There's the real surprise, my bad. <laughs> this man here is the Great British Empire's prided great detective, Sherlock holmes -san. Apparently there's no one in the whole wide world who doesn't know his name. Added sarcasm. Alright, you two. Let's eat breakfast before it gets cold, okay? I'm experimenting with a new blend of herb tea this morning. And this is Iris Watson-chan. Homesan's little roommate. She's an amazing girl, who's also the author of a hit novel series here in London. Apparently, the adventures of Sherlock Holmes are written by her. Well, Mr. Nottoldo, what in the world happened? Oh, right. This morning, a letter arrived from the Great Japanese Empire. Ah! You mean from Susano-chan? Yeah, and she wrote something curious in it. Oh-ho! Now you have my interest. Why don't you tell us all about it over breakfast? Yeah, I'm really curious. Hmm? What are we looking at? We're examining stuff, okay. Oops, no, let's move. How do I do this again? How do I do this again? Uh, okay. <laughs> it's been a while, oh god. I love fireplaces, and around this time of year in London, they start being used a lot. There's something soothing about watching the flames dance. But during the summer, the fireplace is devoted to a useless waste of space. It's like Helmsy when he's not solving a case. Ooh! Harsh! <laughs> I'm working on developing a colder place that can be used during the summer. It's an unbelievably... It's an unbelievable place that can cool the room down. What do you think of that? If you were able to make something like that, your name would go down in history. Sherlock Holmes invents the AC. It's a pretty simple principle. It's just a matter of setting a fire in the place that burns cool. Th that's a good point. 
However, I can't get the fire to burn cool. I'm at my wit's end. Oh, th that's too bad. A large metal box has had a lace cloth draped over it to make it into a coffee table. The metal box is locked up tight with a sturdy looking lock. The case records my papa left behind are in there. Though I've heard. You've never shown them to me though. They're a secret just between me and my papa. You better not go opening it. If you open it carelessly, you might get bitten. Is there a snake? Is there some kind of beast in there or something? Pieces of evidence from cases home son has solved are lined up here. Oh, that's not quite right, Mr. Nodaholdo. Pieces of evidence from cases I solved decisively are lined up here. To me, the case itself is its own reward. So I've collected those as mementos. I see. So what sort of case did this Napoleon bus come from? Bugger if I can remember. What's the point of keeping it as a memento then? <laughs> uh, Sherlock, please. There's a bunch of documents and tools for conducting experiments crowded and stuffed in here. Asano san loves having these things cleaned. It seems like the sort of place she'd dive right in to tidy up, but... Even Sasato-chan didn't try to lay a hand on that. Huh. I wonder why. It probably has to do with the miraculous way homesy has got everything balanced in there. Touch a single thing and it'll come crashing down. Right. Sasato-chan probably gave up on trying to space everything out properly. Kinda sounds like an exchange between two people who are experts at what they do. But in the end, it still just needs to be cleaned up. Oh, I I'm glad that contraption- that this weird thing is still here, I'm glad. There's a flashy mechanical device here. As I recall, it's called... All-Purpose Analysis Scope. It can analyze anything. It's the analysis part that doesn't make sense to me. Oh, I'm glad you pointed it out, Mr. Nodaholdo. Huh? Well, say, that device does indeed spit out analysis results of sorts, but... I have the foggiest idea how to interpret those results. Oh, boy. I see. So I figured I ought to get to work making an all-purpose interpreting machine. Sounds like you're making some pretty pointless things. That sounds like Sherlock, though. Apparently, Iris Chan writes her ideas down on this blackboard. Today we have blue garnet? I wonder what that means. Oh, that! It's a jewel theft case Holmesy solved a long time ago. A garnet is a red jewel, and when it cuts into a round shape, it's called a carbuncle. Huh? But you wrote blue. Ah, actually, he never did manage to find the blue garnet. Huh? So I was wondering what the stolen jewel really was, see? That's the biggest mystery of the case. That's home song for you. Inexplicable at the most convenient times. There are a bunch of different kinds of medicine bottles arranged on this cute looking white shelf. Oh! There are some dangerous chemicals in there, so don't go tasting them no matter how hungry you are. Obviously, I wasn't going to taste them. I'm not a child. I know, but Holmesy gulped down a whole bottle of one of my alkaloids not that long ago. What? He said he was hungry. Anyway, I guess I better be careful too. Oh, I can't, I'm sorry. That's called a typewriter. I type on it with my eyes shut. I can type on it with my eyes shut. I've seen you punching the keys with the force of a machine gun when your deadlines get close. Come to think of it, I woke up from a really interesting dream the other day. I was typing for an hour in the pitch darkness, and yet I didn't make a single mistake. Whoa, that's amazing. 
But when I woke up, it turned out that the typewriter didn't even have paper in it. Oh, wow. I wonder if I was even typing at all. Maybe you were just half asleep and imagining things. The scent of Iris Chan's herb tea changes every day. I'm looking forward to trying it. I make new blends of tea with herbs I grow in my garden. When you say the word blend, it makes it sound kind of scientific. Oh, you get a different result depending on the blend. There are ones that help you feel calm, or have fun, or restore your energy. Today's blend is really going to be something, so look forward to it, okay? Something? Alright, that's all I have on the examination translation, so let's go ahead and talk to Sherlock. First thing is Husato's letter. This was delivered this morning from the Great Japanese Empire by International Post. Ah! Oh, that's Susato's handwriting! Oh, I can't read a single word. So, is your legal aid doing well? Yeah, she's not just doing well. According to the letter the other day, she pulled off an outstanding victory as a defense attorney in the Japanese court. Oh! That's amazing! That's awesome, Susato-chan! I could tell she's on a different level from you, Mr. Nadaholdo. Um, I won a few not guilty verdicts too, you know. And get this, Soseki-san was a witness in that case. Soseki. Soseki. That name doesn't ring any bells. Ouch. What are you talking about? We helped him, remember? During those two murders that occurred on Briar Road. Oh, that shaggy stash hunchbacked mustachio fellow with a strange look in his eyes. You mentioned his mustache twice. His case left an incredibly strong, unforgettable impression on me, after all. Well, I can't remember it all that well now, though. Yare yare. I'm shaking my head. Uh, something curious. So, what was it in that letter that struck you as curious? The boarding house specter case. You remember that, right, holmes -san? Ah, that case! I can't help feeling like there might have been a case like that, but I can't be sure. Guess he's forgotten about it. In susato -san's letter, she said that she wants me to read over the records again and look into it. That half-year-old case? I wonder why that could be. This is what Soseki-san told Susato-san after he returned to Japan. The reason that Susato-san was summoned back to Japan might have something to do with the boarding house specter case. Oh? Apparently, Susato-san's father was shaken when he heard about the case from Soseki-san. And then he sent an international telegram in order to call her back. Ah! That case? There was something strange about it. Huh? I went to all the trouble of writing a nice manuscript about it, and I was getting ready to announce it. But then Holmesy made a mean face and said, You can't make that case public. He made it sound really significant. Oh, did I do that? Homsan, does that mean you know something about it? About why Susaro-san was called back to Japan four months ago. Sato's return home. Susato Chan, it's been four months since we saw her at Dover Harbor, hasn't it? It came as a huge surprise when she suddenly said she had to go home. Yeah, I remember when she received that international telegram from the Great Japanese Empire. Yeah, that's right. Come back to Japan as quickly as possible, it said. As I recall, it contained news of her father's death, correct? He's not dead! No, no, it was a high fever of unknown cause. Don't go killing him off like that, please. But according to this letter, the part about him having a fever was a lie. A lie? So Suchara... Suchara, oh my god, I'm doing it again. So Susano-chan's papa told a lie to get her to come back to Japan. Well, would he? To be honest, I have no idea. But it seems she's pretty sure that it had something to do with what happened during the boarding house specter case. 
He called her back so suddenly. What could Susato-san's father be hiding? Ah, huh. what do you think, Homesy? Hmm? I really can't say. Uh, when did you? He just went into his his detective outfit. Oh my gosh! What? This means I'm going to be busy now too. Well, don't dwell too much on it, even if you do have way too much time on your hands. Now then, look after the place while I'm gone, Iris. Okay, see you later, Holmesy. Bye? He suddenly just left. He left. Professor Mikotoba isn't the only one hiding something. One of the two murders Soseki-san was involved in was prevented from being publicized by none other than Holmes-san. Brilliant! I finally found it! Uh, Iris-chan, is this...? It's the record of that case. I helped Susato-chan... Sorry, saying Susato-chan is very hard for me. <laughs> I helped Susato-chan organize it. That is definitely Susato's bookmark. The boarding house specter case. You want to read it, Naruhodoku? Of course. Thank you, Iris-chan. I can't even imagine what secrets might be hiding in this case, but... Maybe if, we re if I read the record, I might figure something out. Alright, that's the spirit! And so... I decided to read over it with Iris Jan. Everything from the start of the case to the investigation and that violent court battle. Piece by piece, I'm painstakingly dissecting that case. I'm searching for clues hidden within the case. I have nothing but time on my hands. After all, now I'm... I'm forbidden from standing in court in the Great British Empire. Half a year ago, a mysterious murder occurred in the dead of London winter. On the snow-covered sidewalk of Briar Road, a young woman collapsed after being stabbed in the back. Although thankfully, her life wasn't taken. It took several days for her to regain consciousness. An attacker who was invisible in the fog. An unlucky turn of events, the Japanese exchange, exchange student who happened to be walking along behind her was arrested. And that was Natsume Soseki-san. By the way, the one who got him caught was Homesan. His fellow Japanese, Sosato-san and I believed in him and defended him in court. And after a long battle, we somehow managed to win a not guilty verdict. Rejoicing! So Seki-san had said happily, but early the next morning, a telegram arrived for us from Homesan. The victim that was stabbed on Briar Road regained consciousness. Come to St. Bartholomew's Hospital as fast as you can. Sato-san and I hopped on a carriage to the hospital right away. Ooh, back in time, we whine, we whine. Oh, case three's gonna kill me though. It's February 21st, 5.30 in the morning, St. Bartholomew's Hospital, the patient room. Hey, glad you're here, folks. Good morning, Homesan. I still haven't watched YouTube Rewind for this year, actually. This is no time for good mornings. Huh? You sure took your time getting here. What took you? We received the telegram at 5, and it took about 20 minutes by carriage to get to the hospital. And it's 5.30 now. I think we made pretty good time. Time isn't the issue. It's the fact that I felt like I had to wait so long. 
right. Actually, I was woken at four by someone knocking to give me a telegram. It didn't seem fair that I should be the only one to be woken up, so I sent a telegram to you lot too, folks. Rude. Anyway, over there is the recently reawoken victim. You ought to go say hi. I'll be watching from afar, folks. Wow, it's that bad? Damn. Jeez, I need to watch it after this then. I'm gonna remind myself. The English lady who was stabbed in the back on the snow-covered sidewalk four days ago. I, rename, I believe her name is Green-sama. Emerald Green or something along that line? There's a photo sitting here. It appears to be of a young man. He looks to be around the same age as Miss Green. It might be the English lady's special someone. Oh my, Naruhoto-sama. You seem to have a good sense for this sort of thing. Not really. It's just... I just said the first half-baked thing that came to mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, the cabinet behind the bed? Above the bed. There are various medicine bottles lined up on top of the cabinet. I wonder if it's really a good idea to keep them there. Oh my, you might drink them while you were half asleep if it were you, Naruhoto-sama. Yeah, but at least it seems to have a little lock on it. But you might just open that lock up while you were half asleep if it were you, Naruhoto-sama. What the heck, Sasato? Um, being half asleep doesn't give you special powers, you know. It's cute, but I'm like, not feeling it at the same time. Ah! Naruhoto-sama! There's a rat! Hmm. A rat in a hospital. That doesn't seem good. But that rat-sama's all fat and round, and looks very healthy. She just called the rat rat sama. It's it is actually in the dialogue. She called it a rat sama. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I wonder if I should be saying that's a great hospital for you about that. And above the empty bed, there's a empty bed. Hello. There are a bunch of different glass medicine bottles lined up on this cabinet too. I wonder if it's really a good idea to keep them there. You seem like you might drain them dry if you go hungry, Naruhoto-sama. Why is Asano-san picking on Naruhoto about her his hunger issues again? Like, this is a lot for just, like, a short amount of time. <laughs> yeah, but at least it seems to have a little lock on it. Uh, I think this is, like... Ah, uh, no. There is a little difference here. But you seem like you might just pick that lock if you were hungry, Naruhoto-sama. Um, I won't turn into a criminal just because I'm hungry, you know. This seems to be a list of reminders about the patient. Let's see here. Please do not feed thoughtlessly. What is this, a zoo? Come to think of it, there were similar warnings hung up around the neighborhood park. Why did I give her a British accent? Those were probably talking about the pigeons. The ones sleeping here are human. It's quite a harsh thing to write, especially with the person in question here. It seems to be a list of reminders about the patient. Let's see. Please don't run recklessly around the hospital. The fact that the patient isn't here right now... It might mean that they're running around, here in the hospital. Oh my, how concerning. Maybe it'd be better if they just discharged them. Okay, her name is Viridian Green, got it. Good, goody, goody, goody. Let's talk to her then. Um, good morning. Oh, um, I'm Naruhoto from the Great Japanese Empire. Uh, are you the one who stabbed me? Uh, no, I'm, uh, an attorney. Good morning. Likewise, I'm Mikatoba. Then, are you the one who stabbed me? No, I'm a, a legal aid. We heard 
that you awoken and came to greet you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Coming all this way for someone like me. I'm a painter, Viridian Green. Uh, I mean, a painter in the making. More like I hope I can become a painter someday, I guess. Yes, actually, I already know. I know I don't have talent. I'm really sorry. That's probably why I was stabbed. Uh, no. I doubt that had anything to do with it. Someone has really low self-esteem here. How should I put this? She's incredibly pessimistic. Or perhaps just downtrodden. Maybe we should ask her about the incident since we have the chance. Okay, the incident. In any case, it's really terrible what happened to you. To think that someone could suddenly could be suddenly stabbed in the back while they were just walking along the sidewalk. It was a cold it was so cold that day, and the fog was so thick that I couldn't see anything. It's already been four days since then, right? Yes, you've been unconscious the whole time. I heard that in the meantime, the case has already been solved. Yes, I, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, did so with a snap. Oh, honestly, the one who solved it was not a Hodosama who worked so hard in court. Um, does that mean you still haven't heard about the case? Yes, apparently a police officer is going to come and tell me about it. That makes sense. Everyone's so busy, just because I had to go and regain consciousness. I'm sorry. Probably would have been better if someone like me had never woken up. Whoa! No, not at all! We're all relieved that you did! Yare yare. Yare yare is a very hard thing to translate. There's many ways you can translate that. It's just... Like... You could translate it as, oh bother, or oh brother, or good grief, or something along that line. Anyway, uh, Viridia. You said you're a painter, right, Green Sun? Uh, no, inconceivable. To be precise, I'm just a painter in the making. Sorry, I'm still trying to figure out what sort of voice to go with this one. Well, to be more precise, I'm a student of Thorndike Art Academy. So there are schools for art here in England. By the way, whereabouts do you live, young lady? Uh, um... Perhaps it's pretentious for someone like me, but I live in a flat on Brixton Street. Hmm. How curious. Huh? Brixton Street is about ten stations from here on the underground. Thorndike Art Academy is also about three minutes from Brixton Street on foot. What about it, home son? Well, you see, Briar Road is downtown. It's an area that draws a lot of poor folks. Including Mr. Mustache, for example. He has a point. saseki sans boarding house is kind of on the, the, on the decline. I just wonder what a female student from an art academy was doing walking around a place like that. That's all. Huh? Why is she going so quiet all of a sudden? Shame on you, home sama. I won't let you pry needlessly into a young woman's affairs. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Um, are we finished here? I need to prepare to be discharged. Uh, oh right. Thank you for your time. Is that Mr. Narahodo present? Did, did he say Narahodo? Um, if you're looking for Narahodo, the defense attorney, that's me. Oh, so you're Mr. Narahodo. This is for you. It's a, mes it's a message from Mr. Natsume Soseki. Huh? From Soseki-san? For me? I wonder why a police officer would be bringing us a message from Soseki-san. He's in trouble, isn't he? M me too. What the heck is going on here? For an officer from Scotland Yard to be delivering a message this early in the morning. Enough fretting already! Let me see that! Uh, Sherlock! Oh. Well, well. 
Oh, gotta pause it. Mop, sorry, sorry, I had to answer someone a question. What is, where am I? Where am I in the dialogue? Okay. Ah. I had to talk to someone in the background and I had to stop for a second. My bad. Anyway. What is it, Homesan? This is no time to be asking me, what is it, Homesan? Huh? These cases seem determined not to let this famous detective get a moment's rest. A new murder mystery is calling to me. I'd best be going now. The telegram wasn't for you! Murder? Well then, let's head over right away, shall we? Call us a carriage. Uh, but we... We should probably read Soseki-san's message and call on them at this boarding house. Oh, well that's awfully convenient. Convenient? How so? It's written right here in this message. Clear as crystal, folks. The scene of the murder just so happens to be Mr. Mustache's boarding house. The what? I'll go call an express carriage for us right away. It was only yesterday that Soseki san's name was cleared. And yet, the very next day. Who would have thought that a murder would occur right in Soseki san's very own boarding house this time? Soseki san. Just how unlucky are you? That's what I was thinking at the time, but... It's the same day at 7.18 in the morning, Natsume Soseki's boarding house. First floor. Oh. That guy from the original game that we didn't know anything about. It, other than he's like the, the first floor housemate. What the? He's passed away. Yes, there's no mistaking it. S -s 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 Substitute exchange student, not a hodo. Soseki-san. Ah, what does this sort of thing only happen to me? My trial only concluded yesterday. Just when I thought I'd finally get to come home after two days. I awake the very next day, and it's to this mess. Whatever too early bird gets the worm. I do nothing but suffer. Oh, you're... Wait, is this Sherlock? Okay. Oh, you're looking bright-eyed and bushy-tailed again this morning, Mr. Mustache. Good to see you. Good to see. What? It's you, the Sherlock Holmes! Why? What are you doing here? I don't remember inviting you! Homesama came along with us. He thought he might be able to lend you a hand, Soseki-sama. Precisely! You never know when I might come in handy, Mr. Mustache. Ugh. I don't think the Soseki likes you very much. Honestly, you lot are noisy first thing in the morning. Hi, Gregson. Well, if it isn't Junior Detective Gregson, I didn't expect to run into you here. <sighs> Seeing your face at a crime scene never fails to give me heartburn. Ha! Huh, I'd say that fried food you're always eating is more likely more is the more likely culprit. Um, good morning, Detective Gregson. Don't go touching things around the crime scene now. <sighs> Fantastic. Great, we have Gregson and Holmes in the same area. Great, this is great. <laughs> what did I say? Don't touch. You're disturbing the crime scene. But actually, I was just looking. Well, stop it. You're just looking disturbs the crime scene. Ugh. Detective Gregson sure is in a bad mood. Indeed. Apparently, he's allowed to disturb the mood of the crime scene as much as he wants. <laughs> I guess I should start by hearing what he has to say. Well, we're gonna talk to Suseki first, because that's where I am on this thing. That's what this thing is telling me. What can I say? It looks like you're in a tough spot again, huh? It's 
been just three days since I was arrested for the murder that occurred on the sidewalk in front of the boarding house. To think that the same thing could happen on the very same night that I return home. My life is hell! So the victim's room is here on the first floor. And your room is one floor up, right? Indeed it is! I suppose you could call us neighbors. So, were you an acquaintance of the victim then, Soseki-san? Eh? <laughs> Soseki, what? what? What's this about? All I did was ask him a, qu a casual question. What's he getting all so shaken up about? Well, I mean, I can't say I didn't know him, but, but, but it's not as though I ever v v visited his room! And I swear that to you upon my very name! I wonder why I suddenly feel... As though it might have been better had we not asked that. In any case, I couldn't help feeling concerned and that's why I called you! By sending a message with that police detective! Poor Soseki. <laughs> um, about the man who died. William Pentancy. He's a lodger here at the boarding house. I'm gonna put that in the I'll put it in the I'll put it in the jack. Give me a second. There you go. As you can see, he's an actor has been, or maybe I ought to say has been actor. Pentancy Sama. The ones who discovered the body were the boarding house landlord. Mr. Garadup and Porter, Mr. Natsume. Apparently, they were worried that when he didn't wake at his usual time and broke his door down. But as I recall, Garadup's son had a bad leg, right? Quite right. The one who broke it down was that trembling, mustache hunchback Japanese man there. So, Saki san, huh? Oh, wow. Imagine that little that hunchback guy pushing down a door. The victim lived an extremely poor lifestyle and has spent time in jail for some for small time fraud. He had no money nor anywhere to go. The only people who knew him were the others who lived in this boarding house. He's quite a pitiful man. A pitiful dead man. Come to think of it, what's Soseki san doing here? The investigation's only just started, and the only other people here are those who work for the police. Not that he was acting strange or that there was anything particularly suspicious about him. I just thought we should hear what the Japanese criminal, or I mean, border, had to say. You just called him a criminal, didn't you? I can't help getting the feeling that Soseki-sama is being suspected of something here. Well, that's true, I mean. His manner is a little odd at the best of times. Oh. Where's Soseki-sama? Anyway, I can't say much until the coroner shows up, but... It looks like he'd only just died. His body was still warm. I don't think I'd have the guts to touch the body, even if they let me. Sherlock? What is this pose? <laughs> what is this even? Um, Homesan? What are you doing? Ah! I should think it was obvious! This is what some will refer to as investigating! I'm asking because it's not obvious. In that case, what did you find out, Homesan? Oh dear, quite the impatient lady we have here. It's only been five minutes since I entered the room, you know? If you want to talk about what I found out, though... It's nothing less than the truth! Huh? The, the truth? But, Homesama, that would mean everything. Ah, now that you mention it, I suppose that is one way to look at it. Anyway, at this juncture, I've come to two conclusions. <gasps> Joint reasoning, yes! I missed this so much! The first is that last night, the victim engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat in order to defend himself. What? Why did I get such an exaggerated reaction out of you, Soseki-sama? Uh, never mind! Please feel free to completely forget I even exist! 
And the other conclusion is that last night, the victim consumed a poison concealed by a strong fragrance. R ridiculous! <laughs> I'm sorry, it just went really fast. I have a dog behind me. Stop, dog, stop. You're really cute, but I need to read. Hi, Coco. Um, your reaction was even more violent that time than before, Soseki-san. Oh! No, 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 no! Please, pretend I'm not even here! Invisible man! That's impossible. Please explain, Hong-san. Let us hear your deductions. I hear that the joint reasonings in this one are pretty more dynamic than they were in the original, so I'm excited. Yes, of course! Let's decipher the first act of this tragedy with some famous deductions. I dare say we fun. We've heard some pretty unbelievable famous deductions so far. Will another incredible miracle occur this time before my very eyes? Now then, shall we begin? Sherlock Holmes, Logic and Reasoning Experimental Theater. We're just jumping right into it! Let's go! Ah. Cause of the victim's death. So what happened that night? Let's start by observing the victim's body. The victim died with foam upon his lips. This suggests poisoning. And right before him is a large plate. And upon that plate is... Half a large bar of soap. This is very telling. What is soap doing upon his plate? As if it were his last meal. Yes. Could the victim have eaten it? The fact is indicated by the fork. The Seki's just like, are you for real? <laughs> it would seem his hunger caused him to cross a final line. Using his fork as a weapon, the victim fought hand to hand in order to defend himself. Simply put, unable to bear his hunger, he greedily devoured the soap. You see, poor quality London soap could also be used as poor quality lethal poison. As one might suspect, the poison that took his life is hiding upon his plate. So, the bubbles he blew from his mouth support that perfectly. The victim's cause of death was poisoning from eating too much poor quality soap. Fortunately, I'm a little more curious about the flavor of the poor quality candle, though. What? Death by soap poisoning? <laughs> oh my goodness. Suicide or homicide? Now then, there's just one problem still remaining. Is this incident a suicide or a homicide? His death came to him in the midst of his last supper. There's a third party present, as indicated by the single cup. Indeed, arriving at that conclusion just from that is dangerous. After all, it's possible that a cautious murderer could have taken his own cup home with him. Allow me to provide an answer to the vexing problem of the murderer's unknown identity. The clue that reveals their identity is, of course, is that broken doorknob. It's broken now, but at the time of the murder, the door was locked. And the only key in existence was in the victim's pocket. In other words, when the victim consumed the poison, he was all alone. The cheap soap, soap reeks of cheap oil. Surrounded by that harsh wafting scent, he collapsed all alone from the poison. I only prayed that his soul was washed clean even the smallest amount. Oh my god. Not even. What even? No one else was there during the death. That concludes Sherlock Holmes' famous deduction. I'm gonna cry. What the heck? I, I, I don't even know where to start with that. I don't. I don't even. There's something I'm still curious about. There's always something you're still curious about. Go ahead and ask anything you like. Did he really have ever eaten soap? No matter how hungry he was? As you can see, he, he, he led a rather impoverished lifestyle. He must have suddenly come to see the soap as a delicious looking feast. Oh my goodness. 
Actually, I tried it once myself many years ago. You mean you've eaten soap? What? It was ages ago. I hoped it might clean the inside of my stomach bit. Did it work? I was writhing on the floor in pain and threw up everything in my stomach. So perhaps you could say that it did. And that's when <laughs> I learned that it was possible for soap to be a deadly poison. Not only was it disgusting, but I had a painful consequences. Personally, I don't recommend it. I wouldn't have tried it even if he had recommended it. I was wondering about something too. And what's that? It's Soseki-sama. Me? The fact that I can see him moving restlessly out of the corner of my eyes bothers me. It's almost as though he has some sort of inkling regarding Homesama's deductions. What, 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 what? What nonsense! His voice kind of faded at the end there. As far as I can tell from observing Soseki Sama's mannerisms, there may be some room of for reconsideration of Home Sama's deductions again this time. Sometimes Home Sama's powers of observation and deduction can be so sharp that he actually overshoots the truth a little. Returning him to the right side of truth is our job. Alright, let's give him a little help again. A little help again. Uh, that was not a hold on my bad. You need to find and gently fine-tune him. The important phrase that would unlock Homesama's deduction. And if you do that, I'm sure... Homesama's real famous deduction will be complete. In that case, I'm counting on you again this time, folks. Now then, shall we begin? Sherlock Holmes. Logic and reasoning, experimental theater. Also, uh, after I do this, I'm gonna take a little break and then I'll come back, because I need a- I need a break. Oh my god, my dog, hold on. Ah, oh, my dogs. Alright, we're on the topic again, cause of the victim's death. Alright. So, what happened that night? Let's start by observing the victim's body. The victim die would fall upon his lips. This is just poisoning. Sitting right before him is a large plate, and upon that plate is... Is the second basically just the reaction because the guy is dead? Because that's great. Half a large bar of soap. This is very telling. What is the soap doing upon his plate as if it were his last meal? Yes. Could the victim have eaten it? That fact is indicated by the fork. He's got a point. A fork does suggest eating, doesn't it? Yes, I suppose it does. If one were going to eat soap, it seemed like a fork would be a more appropriate tool than chopsticks. There really is only half a bar on the plate. But is there really no other explanation? Did he really eat the soap? Let's see if we can find any proof of that. Oh boy. What are we examining? The teacup? We're examining the teacup then. He must have been drinking tea out of this. It's empty. So you can't say for sure. Oh, maybe, you know, since it's this guy, he might have put the soap in the cup, added some water, and drank it. Still don't know for certain that he's the world's biggest lover of soap. <laughs> ah, Naruto! Is soap meant to be eaten with a fork? Whether you use fork or chopstick, I don't believe soap was meant to be eaten at all. But why is he holding a fork then? Ah, uh, getting angry with me won't help anything. In any case, saying that he used this to eat soap won't change the deduction. So I think we ought to look for a different clue. Uh, wait. How do I turn- there it is, there's, there's a piece of soap on the ground! Ah! Never eat it! Never eat it! Th there's soap on the floor! I had no idea Pentensi san loved soap so much. Pentensi. Just a moment, please. The soap! It's a perfect match for the other half of the bar on the table. 
What does that mean? It would seem that the bar of soap was split in half and that this is the other piece. This is hard. This is actually really hard. It's not staying in that one spot for me. God damn it. <laughs> Did the victim really eat the soap? The answer is revealed by this other half of the soap bar. There's another half. In other words, the soap wasn't eaten. Of course. Oh, what? I'm missing a piece of dialogue. Wait, what? Wasn't eaten. I guess that's the line there. Or was that Naruto? Oh god, I'm sorry. I'm losing my my space in here. I. Naruto's line was, of course it wasn't. No one would eat soap no matter how hungry they were. Even I could manage one bite at least. But as far as we can see, there doesn't appear to be any other food here. I'm glad you noticed. There lies our answer. You see, poor quality London soap could also be used as poor quality lethal poison. As one might suspect, the poison that took his life is hiding upon this plate. Homesan is really did set on that soap, isn't he? Perhaps he didn't eat it, but only licked it. I wouldn't want to use something that lethal to wash my hands. But he has a point. There doesn't seem to be any food in this room. But is food the only thing people put in their mouths? We're looking at the teacup again? They're looking at the teacup again. This is a western style OU... Oh, you know me. Don't you think it's about time you gave in and start calling them teacups? The cup is empty. The victim didn't eat the soap. But on the night of the murder, it's entirely possible that he drank some tea. Yes, that seems plausible. As one might suspect, the poison that robbed him of his life was hidden in his teacup. Indeed! Cups have long been the go-to place to sip poison to slip poison into. It looks like he got carried away and drained his cup dry. Considering that there doesn't seem to be a single crumb of food in this room. There's only one conclusion that makes sense in these circumstances. The victim's cause of death was poisoning from poison that had been slipped into his cup. Okay, sure. Now then, there's just one problem still remaining. Is this incident a suicide or a homicide? His death came to him in the midst of his last supper was a third party present. That's indicated by the single cup. That tipped over western style oh yo oh you oh my goodness oh my boo boo. This that tipped over western style oh you know me came up earlier. Patensi sama drank some tea on the night of the murder. If we assume that There shouldn't be any particular problem with that. But what bothers me is...
Alright, I'm so sorry. I thought I would not be disturbed for the next two hours, but I guess uh, that's not the case. So, um, I'll do my best to try to keep this going. Okay, where are we? Sozeki sounds unusual reaction upon hearing that, but there must be something more to this deduction. Let's have one more good look around. There's another cup in the victim's hand. This could only be another Western-style old gnome. It's a teacup! It appears to be empty, though. Thank you, Susato, for stopping him. <laughs> and the fact that it's dangling from the victim's hands means... that Bentensi-sama used this cup. But if that's true, then... it completely changes what we've deduced so far. I'm kind of afraid to say it. I think I know how you feel. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, oh, you know me. The question as to whether a third party was present is indicated by this other cup. That's right, there are two cups in this room. In other words, during the victim's last supper, he might have had... someone with him as a guest. Well, at the very least, what we can say for certain is... that someone drank tea with the victim here last night. What are you talking about? This is preposterous! Indeed. Arriving at that conclusion just from that is dangerous. After all, without knowing who the guest was, this is meaningless. Allow me to provide an answer to the vexing problem of the murderer's unknown identity. Who on earth was the guest who visited this room last night? The clue that reveals their identity is, of course, that broken doorknob. His deduction seems to have taken a strange detour. It's not as though he can try to go back to his idea about eating too much soap at this point. Who could have visited this room last night? To be perfectly honest, I have kind of a bad feeling about this. You can avert your eyes from your feeling, but you can't avert your eyes from the truth. I guess I better have another look. Just when I was starting to think that there was nothing in this room but the handmade stage and costume. Turns out there are some books here. Just three of them, though. What sort of books are they? Uh, the titles are... The Portrait of Monsieur Le Coq, Canterbury Passion, and the last one is Gabaru and the Sea. Gabaru? Gabaru and the Sea? I'm very sorry for butchering these. I'm trying to read. <laughs> sorry, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I feel like I've heard those somewhere before. Weren't those the three books from Case 4 and DGS 1? <laughs> this is probably just an amazing coincidence, but they are a perfect match with the books Oseki-sama bought at the used bookshop a few days ago. Eh? Uh, four days ago, on the day Miss Green was stabbed on the sidewalk. So Oseki-sama was on his way home from the used bookshop with three books he bought. Now those three books are in the victim's room, but... So Seki-san insisted that he'd never been here before. What in the world does this mean? Uh, what could it mean? We're going to present those books, unfortunately. <laughs> The thing that reveals the identity is, of course, Soseki's books. Exactly! Those three books have something in common that can't be explained away as mere coincidence. Uh. Soseki-san bought these books at the used bookshop four days ago. It, it's... Co coincidence In that case, bring those three books from your room to show us! Right this instant! Uh-uh... I firmly refuse! The fact that you can't go get them means that these books are yours. Ugh. 
I- what? Four days ago, Soseki-san was on his way home from the used bookshop, and the next day he was arrested. <laughs> if he brought the books here that night, he could have just said so, but he didn't. In other words, you brought these three books and visited this room! Last night, when the trial was over, and you returned to the boarding house, correct? Ah! Why is this so sexy, what? Which means that the conclusion to this deduction is as follow. Last night, the victim died of poisoning here in this room. And also last night, a third party was in this room. And that third party was... Apparently, it was you, Natsume Soseki-san. <laughs> that concludes Sherlock Holmes' famous deduction. Oh, goodness. That was amazing. Holy crap, the camera work on that. Holy crap. Oh, the guest was Natsume Soseki. That's a new conclusion. Holy crap. I'm so hyped for the next joint reasoning now. That was incredible. <laughs> That was so fun to watch, like, all the way through. Ugh! N not again! NOT AGAIN! It appears, Mr. Natsume, that we ought to have you come take a little trip down to the yard again. J j j j j just a moment! Just a moment! Oh, he just said that in English! Yes? I mean, just now, you said that door was locked! Tightly! The seki son got so shaken up that I'm sure this is going to be incredibly serious for him. Oh, all you'd have to do to get around that would be to duplicate the key. Huh? You're a boarder at the same boarding house. I'm sure you had an opportunity. But By the way! <laughs> More English. <laughs> I don't think that's quite the word you're looking for. I don't think trying to change the subject will help you any, Mr. Mustache. Ugh, damn you, Sherlock Holmes! Sounds like he's really come to see him as a rival. Anyway, you're coming with me. There's a paddy wagon waiting outside. Substitute exchange student, not a hodo! I never imagined things would turn out like this, but... I'm counting on you again! I'm innocent! Understood. I'll come see you at the detention center later. Also! Y yes My... My kitty! Please feed her! Oh! <laughs> and so... Natsume Soseki-san was unable to free himself from the Spectre's curse, and he was arrested once more as a suspect. Thanks to this famous detective's cruel, famous deductions. I believe you two were the ones who asked me to tell you! No, just no, Sherlock. <laughs> anyway, Detective Grayson left too, so... Might as well take this chance to have a look around the crime scene. I agree. Oh, and... Yes? If I'm not mistaken, I believe the detective just said... that the one who discovered the murder was the landlord, John Garrett of Sama. The landlord, huh? I'm sure he's in his room on the third floor. Alright, we better have a talk with him later. Alright, I'm gonna stop. Uh, not like stop, stop, but I mean like, I'm gonna stop and take a little break and just stand up and walk around. Uh, I'll be back in about five minutes. Briar Road no hodo de okotta. Sungatanaki hanin yoru. Fuyu no yoru no sangeki. Senaka o sasare taoreta. Urawakaki dedi ga seishi o samayo uchi ni. 
事件は解決した窮地に陥った東洋人の留学生が我が友人によって救い出されたその晩ガス灯の刻む炎暗い影の中再び奇怪な事件が闇を切り裂いた当時の新聞の戦場的な見出しを記憶している者も,も多いだろう悪霊に見入られた死の邸宅死刑囚の呪いガス魔人の恐怖現場に駆けつけた名探偵は瞬時にその真相を看破するのだがそれは悲劇の舞台の幕開けを告げるプレリュードに過ぎなかったのである。This case takes place after 4 in the original game, right? Case 4 in the original game, but before case 5 in the original game? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, here we go. So, my name is Naruhodo Ryonosuke. I'm still getting used to being a defense attorney. Six months ago, I crossed the Great Ocean from the Great Japanese Empire to London, the Imperial City of the Great British Empire, as a legal exchange student. Through a mysterious twist of fate, I happened to meet an internationally known great detective. And ended up somehow setting up an office in the attic of his room. I stood in this foreign court as a defense attorney, and even managed to win a not guilty verdict. But after an unforgettable, grueling battle four months ago, I haven't stood in court. Well, more like I can't stand in court. Holy crap, he. <laughs> So that's his punishment after case 5, he just can't stand in court. <laughs> But that halted story has begun to move again because of the single letter that arrived this morning from my homeland. Well, that's his stomach growling. Technically, Naruhodo sort of doesn't have qualifications to be a law student. So, technically, he's kind of. It, it's very, um. Great area. <laughs> There's a delicious scent wafting up from downstairs. It's about time for breakfast. Guess I'll head down. To home san's room. It is August 30th, 728 in the morning at home in home's room. Naruhodo-kun, perfect timing. I just finished frying the bacon and was about to call you down. Yeah, good morning, Iris Chan. It smells great again today. So, listen to this. Something surprising happened this morning. Shh! Silence! How about some light mental. calistic. calistanic? Calistanic! Oh my god, what? <laughs> okay, hold on. How about some light mental calistanics before breakfast, folks? Is that a drug? <laughs> Homesan. The hull, I see. Oh my, so that's how it is. Oh, too close, too close. I believe. I see it now. The truth that my deductions have whispered to me. D what do you mean? You! Voila! Experienced something surprising this morning. How was that, Mr. Naruhodo? The. Oh, come now. It was simple. I shouldn't even need to explain. For starters, your hair is an absolute mess this morning, sticking out at all angles. Secondly, you seem to have forgotten to fasten the third button on your jacket. From those two things, I can conclude that something happened to startle you this morning. Um, can I say something? Oh, by all means. What is it, Mr. Naruhodo? My hair is just like it always is. It's been like this ever since I met you. Huh. Has it? And this button was popped off last night. By you. Oh? Uh -huh. Holmesy did that? Ah! Now I remember! It happened after dinner, didn't it? I took up my famous instrument like always and was enjoying playing a solo into its warbling voice. That's great. The sinking famous instrument suddenly snapped in third string. 
I was so fierce that without even thinking about it, I just reached out and plucked off the button in front of me. Can I please have my button back? I can't close my jacket anymore. Did he take the button to try to fix the violin? <laughs> what? You expect me to know? Okay, um... I'm only gonna put Sasato in that DLC outfit for this case because I don't particularly... It's okay, but I'm like not a huge fan of it. But she has some interesting animations when she's in this uh, DLC outfit, so I'll just leave it on. I don't even know when I'm gonna put Sherlock on the other outfit because he just... It doesn't fit anywhere in any of these cases because they're all in, like, Britain. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna keep her in this outfit. I'm gonna keep Naruhoto in this outfit forever. <laughs> It's great. Alright, God, the audio's good. Let's see. Okay. I don't have a translation of the Sherlock Holmes monologue that's gonna come up, I'm sure. Nope, that's not it. Uh, more, than, uh, more than anything, I will probably add the dialogue, the monologue, when I actually work on the LP version of this game, so. I mean, technically... If you can squint really hard, you'll notice that the dialogue in the cutscene is in English. But it's like in scribble, so it's really hard to see what it's saying. So I can't, unfortunately, type out or give you the translation of what's being said there, so... I'm gonna do my best to get to the to be continue on this one. Alright, second to finish setting up. Got my guides up just in case I missed something on the translation that I was given, so. Yes, we can continue. We've finished the last case. You won't be overwriting anything. Know where it is? Is it lying over there somewhere? Harsh. What matters is whether my deduction was correct or not, and nothing else. But. I'm pretty sure not the Holocoon told us that already. Something surprising happened this morning, he said. Sherlock. <laughs> now there's the great surprise. Ugh. Oh, there's the real surprise, my bad. <laughs> this man here is the Great British Empire's prided great detective, Sherlock holmes -san. Apparently, there's no one in the whole wide world who doesn't know his name. Added sarcasm. Alright, you two. Let's eat breakfast before it gets cold, okay? I'm experimenting with a new blend of herb tea this morning. And this is Iris Watson-chan, Homesan's little roommate. She's an amazing girl, who's also the author of a hit novel series here in London. Apparently, the adventures of Sherlock Holmes are written by her. Well, Mr. Notaholdo, what in the world happened? Oh, right. This morning, a letter arrived from the Great Japanese Empire. Ah! You mean from Susano-chan? Yeah, and she wrote something curious in it. Oh, -ho. now you have my interest. Why don't you tell us all about it over breakfast? Yeah, I'm really curious. What are we looking at? We're examining stuff. Okay. Oops. No, let's move. How do I do this again? How do I do this again? 